We try to develop our mindfulness as we go through the day, our ability to keep in mind what we should be doing, lessons we've learned from the past. So that when we see something unskillful coming up in the mind, we know what to do. We recognize it, and we may have had some experience with getting rid of things like this in the past, so we try those approaches. And if those approaches don't work, well then we've got to try something new. But mindfulness is our fund of knowledge that's potentially useful. So you want to be able to have it at your fingertips at all times. Alertness is what actually observes what's going on in the present moment. The two of them work together. But for mindfulness to be strong, the Buddha said, it requires two other qualities. One is that your virtue be good, and that your views be right. Because if you're not virtuous, you look back on your behavior and you see a lot of things you'd rather not see. So you tend to shut them off, create walls in the mind. When you put up walls in the mind, it's obvious that you're not going to be able to access a lot of things, especially the lessons you should have learned from your mistakes. So things get shut off. Same with your views. You want to make sure your views are in line with what the Buddha taught, that our suffering comes from inside. All too often we think of things in terms of what's happening outside in the world. We're suffering because of climate change, we're suffering because of the politics, because of the economy, basically from what other people are doing or what, what's simply happening as a result of natural processes. But if those are our causes of suffering, suffering will never come to an end. You have to realize that the real suffering that's causing your problems is coming from within you. So you have to look inside and see what's going on in the mind that's creating the suffering. And what you're good at to stop it. As the Buddha said, if people couldn't stop doing these things, there'd be no point in this teaching. And if they didn't benefit from getting rid of unskillful qualities, there'd be no point in teaching either. Part of our problem is that we see unskillful qualities, we see our defilements as our friends. And when they put pressure on our nerves and say, go with us, go with us, we're all too willing to give in. We have to realize, okay, they are the cause of suffering. They're like the kind of friends that get you to break the law, and then when the police come, they go running away. So you've got to make sure that your virtue is good and that your views are right. That you're suffering not because of the fact that you're trying to be skillful, you're suffering because of the unskillful qualities in the mind. When you think in those terms, then your mindfulness becomes strong. It opens up areas of the mind that were closed off before, so you can remember things that you out of the rise would have forgotten, and you can learn from them. And the fact that your views are right means you stay focused on where the real problems are what's going on in the mind, how you're processing the data coming in from outside. Once you've got these two qualities working together, then your mindfulness will become strong. And you have access to all the knowledge you've been picking up over time about what really is worthwhile and what's not. You can see the drawbacks of unskillful behavior. You can see the allure of those things and get past it. So make sure your mindfulness is well-founded. All too often people come to a mindfulness retreat and that's all they're taught. They start out with mindfulness, not realizing that it has to have its foundations too. But once you get the foundations in place, then your mindfulness will be really useful.